we're releasing to you today on the Prophecy Files On Demand the preconditions of the invasion of the nation of Israel. How important that is right now because what you're seeing happening in Iran and the attacks that have been upon our United States drone and other events over the past several weeks, all of that is designed to try to provoke Israel and the United States into a war. Well, there's four things that I give in this week's On Demand that you need to hear concerning the nation of Israel. One of them I'll tell you is the actual formation of the nation of Israel. There had to be a state of Israel for the things that are happening right now to occur. Obviously, over the past several months, we've watched as the foundations of Israel have been shored up by the declaration of uh, Jerusalem being the capital and the moving of the United States Embassy there. Uh, that was uh, absolutely awesome to take place. This is just one of those preconditions. There's a lot of things that are happening and I invite you to be able to go right now and watch what the preconditions are for the invasion of Israel. Thanks for joining us. Welcome back to Prophecy Files. I hope that you will get the resources we're making available to you. It is our effort to help you stay up to date on Bible prophecy. Now let me talk to you about the preconditions of the coming invasion of the nation of Israel. You can find that in Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39, and I know that you have heard me speak of this before, but I want to share with you just a few things that are found in that passage of Scripture that helps us to know that we're coming closer to that actual war. It is the war that is identified as the war of Gog and Magog. And all of the components, the uh, players are all on the playing field right now as named in Ezekiel 38 and 39. So the preconditions began with the fact that there must be a state of Israel. And that took place in May 14, 1948, when a nation, according to the scripture, was born in a day. How important that it is that we understand that was the uh, starting of the last day's time clock with the formation of the nation of Israel. With that in mind, it shows us the return of Jesus Christ is ever more near. The second precondition that we want to dig into a little bit deeper here tonight is the fact that Israel, according to the scripture in Ezekiel 38, must be living in a security and in a restful state whenever and prior to this coming war of Gog and Magog, according to Ezekiel 38. Now follow with me in chapter 38, verse number 8. It says, After many days thou shalt be visited in the latter years. Thou shalt come into the land that is brought back from the sword and is gathered out of many people against the mountains of Israel, which have been always waste, but it is brought forth out of the nations, and they shall dwell safely all of them. Thou shalt ascend. He's talking to that uh, enemy that is coming against Israel. Thou shalt ascend and come like a storm. Thou shalt be like a cloud over uh, to cover the land, thou and all thy bands and many people with thee. Thus saith the Lord God, it shall also come to pass that at the same time shall things come into thy mind and thou shalt think an evil thought. And thou shalt say, I will go up to the land of the unwalled villages and I will go to them that are at rest, that dwell safely, all of them dwelling without walls and having neither bars nor gates, to take a spoil and to take a prey, to turn thine hand upon the desolate places that are now inhabited and upon the people that are gathered out of the nations which have gotten cattle and goods that dwell in the midst of the land. Now, this passage of Scripture is so vitally important to understanding not only the preconditions, but what the mindset is of that leader, uh, Gog, and the culmination, the coalition of states, Magog, and those that make up those many people that he speaks of to come down into the nation of Israel, thinking to take a spoil. Russia has long since wanted a warm water port, and now with them establishing a location and bases there in Syria, they have that. And you're maybe possibly aware of this already 
that one of the largest reservoirs of natural gas has been found by Israel right off of the coast in the Mediterranean. Why is that so important? Because that and many other spoils, I believe, is what Russia, not only uh, Russia and the other states are looking for, but the inevitable to drive Israel off the map. Now, this passage of Scripture does not mean a total state of peace. In other words, that things are absolutely calm. In fact, the words defined in Hebrew here uh, that we see we read safely, they're dwelling safely, actually means to appease or a sense of security, a confidence or a boldness. And the word rest that's found in verse 11 uh, actually means idleness or still. So it's not a state meaning uh, a ceasing from all hostile activity in the Middle East. That doesn't mean everything has to stop. Before Russia and Iran, as the leaders, would attack the Jewish people, uh, according to the Scripture, all they have to do is be back in the land. The Jewish people are now back in the land, and they are living securely in the land, restored from the sword, according to the book of Ezekiel 38 and 8. Now today, Israel is more confident than ever before about their ability to defend itself from any invasion. And so Israel then, by definition, would be dwelling safely in the land. Not only that, but one of the other preconditions is that Israel will be, according to the Scripture, this is what we know, will be invaded by a northern coalition of nations. They are named in the book of Ezekiel 38. The objective is exactly what you're hearing in the news and the reports from the leaders of Iran and other states will be to wipe out the Jewish people and the state of Israel. Now, the nations are clearly named in Ezekiel 38, and this is something that we know. You don't have to stretch the Word of God to find this out. The Bible says clearly that Rosh, which would be modern-day Russia, the northernmost nation, or is identified in the book of Daniel as the bear of the north, Magog, which is many of the former southern uh, Soviet republics like uh, Kazakhstan and Uzbekistan, others, Afghanistan, will join in on this. He identifies in Ezekiel 38, Meshach and Tubal, which are the areas south of the Black Sea and the Caspian Sea, which is uh, northern portions of modern Turkey. Then there's Persia, which is modern-day Iran. Ethiopia, which is modern-day Sudan. Uh, the tribe of Put would be that modern-day Libya and Tunisia coming in to invade Israel. Gomer is another one identified in Ezekiel 38, which is another portion of Turkey. And uh, Beth Togomar is another section of Turkey. This is a very uniquely aligned uh, coalition of nations that are called out by God for these last days. In fact, uh, these nations assembling around Israel even now, I believe, constitute the preconditioning of an invasion of the nation of Israel. A last day sign of this coming war of Gog and Magog in Ezekiel 38 and 39. Now, the alliance of these nations is important. In Ezekiel's day, it was not even possible because uh, these nations were not located near each other. Not only that, Islam was not in an existence, and all of these are Muslim-based nations. Now, the current conditions of the leaders of uh, Ezekiel 38 and 39 are already set for an invasion, I believe, at the door of Israel. Russia, the leader of this coalition of Arab Islamic states, is now established, has now established a stronghold in Syria that they will never leave from, I believe. The Bible says in Ezekiel 38 that that leader, Gog and Magog, these leaders of these nations, will think an evil thought against the chosen people, that is, the state of Israel, the Jewish people. Russia blaming Israel is already uh, an affront toward Israel face to face. With Iran as another named leader in this coalition, as a terrorist state, they have both established strongholds in Syria, and in my opinion, they will never leave this location as they are in position for the Ezekiel 38 war. Russia and Iran are said to be compliant in what's taking place here. Now, why uh, are these the preconditions of Ezekiel 38 and 39? Well, I believe these alignment of nations has never happened in the past, 
just like this, and God, by His divine order, has put a hook in the jaw of the bear of the north, Russia, and brought them down into place along with Iran to be prepositioned for the next great conflict to come. This is interesting in the times that we're in because Israel is feeling more safe because of the United States' major decision to move the embassy and declare Jerusalem to be the capital. In fact, even the Jewish people see this as a prophetic sign. Yet the nations that surround Israel are getting into a preconditioned location for a prophetic invasion. Bible prophecy is definitely uh, about the preconditioning as we're reading this here. It is definitely a sign of the end times. The last thing I want to share with you tonight is that Israel will stand alone as these preconditions are beginning to uh, form themselves. Israel will stand alone in the world with no earthly support. Now, I say earthly support because God is going to certainly stand with Israel and for Israel in the coming days. In the passage of Ezekiel 38 and 39, when the invasion of Israel begins to take place, the Bible said no nation will be standing with Israel, only God. And Zechariah 12, 3 says, On that day, when all the nations of the earth are gathered against her, God said, I will make Jerusalem an immovable rock for all the nations. God said that I'm going to exalt myself in that place in the last days and I will display my glory and let the nations of the world be punished to show them that my people Israel are my people. I'll show my greatness and my holiness according to Ezekiel 38 and 23. God is watching the situation. He's watching the countries align themselves against Israel. But I want you to consider this fact, what I believe and certainly is a fact of a coming event next on the calendar of God. What could the trigger be for this coming war? What would cause an opportunity for an invasion like we're describing in Ezekiel 38 and 39? I believe that trigger could be the rapture of the church. When millions of Christians go missing around the world, leaving a vacuum even from the support of the United States, which must decrease and will stand away from Israel. Could it be that the millions of believers missing off of this people planet will be the opportunity for the invaders to invade the nation of Israel and God to show up to do mighty signs and wonders? My friends, I believe we're just that close to the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. The rapture is mocked and downplayed and even purposefully forgotten in many pulpits today. Replacement theology has given religious mindsets to uh, say that the church has replaced Israel and that the rapture is not even one of our core values and on our mission statement. The lack of preaching about the rapture leaves believers without hope, which is the reason why many decide week after week that fellowship with other believers and going to church faithfully to the house of God is not even necessary. But heed this warning from Hebrews 10:25 not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. Listen now, and so much the more as you see the day approaching. That day is the coming of Jesus Christ. My friends, we're watching the tremors of Ezekiel 38 and 39, and I can believe that the rapture very well could be the trigger point that would signal the invasion into Israel but it is also the sign that is next on the calendar of God that what takes place by God's own hand will be God will be exalted and the nation of Israel will be protected. I want you to get ready and stay ready, my friends, because I believe without a doubt that Jesus Christ is even at the door. And it is now time for us to do what we do for the kingdom's sake urgently and with great passion. That's why we're bringing Prophecy Files to you every week at this same time. And I want to thank you for watching and thank you for being a part of this program. Until the next time we get together, remember Jesus Christ is coming soon.